So everybody, I'm Mary Engelman, Executive Director of the Greater Farmington Area Chamber of Commerce, and we are so honored to welcome back um, the governor today because I'm telling you something, folks. It's what it's about. Jobs, jobs, jobs. And I'm pretty pleased to be here. I'm pleased um, with such a prestigious um, group up here. So, But I, before we get into that, I want to go ahead and acknowledge some of our um, dignitaries out in the audience. So we have Senator Jim Marlowe. We have Senator Mike Kowal. We have um, Representative Eileen Kowal, Representative Clint Casto, Representative Michael McCready, McCready excuse me, sir. Um, we have Representative Martin, let's see, Howard Lack? How did, I, how did I do with that one? Well, <laughs> all right, so that's an A-plus there, folks. And then we also have, um, for Farmington Hills, our Mayor Pro Temp, Richard Lerner, who is out in the audience. Um, we also have our um, chairman of our Economic Development Corporation, John Anha. Where are you, sir? There you go. He was one of our original um, settlers here in <laughs> the town of Farmington Hills. But, and then let's moving on. We also have our chancellor of Oakland Community College, a college that we are so proud to have within our borders of Farmington Hills. Tim Myers is here. Um, there you are. And then also um, the president of this Orchard Ridge campus is Jackie Shacko. Oh, there, there we go. <laughs> so, there we go. And um, so we missed now. Oh, Gail Haynes, I'm so sorry. Um, welcome. That was totally not good. Strike that, folks. Um, so now, let's moving on here. I would like to, um, before we get started, to remind you again that this is social media at its finest. We are online. People are going to be asking questions, Twittering. Um, so the governor's um, Facebook is up and live. So hash, make sure that you're using hashtag AskGovSnyder. Again, hashtag AskGovSnyder. And I'd like to um, start down the line here. And please forgive me if I butcher names. My maiden name was Mary Smith, so give me a break here. Um, but we're going to start out with um, a welcome to uh, Maximiliani. Um, we're going to go with Max. I think that's a lot easier. Straub, and she is the CFO and Executive Vice President of Robert Bosch LLC here in our own borders, Farmington Hills. Then we have um, Lorraine Hale, who is the owner and controller of EJH Construction, also in our um, community here. Welcome. And then on to my left here, Stefan Politis. He is the vice president of HR and Brosa, and you're out of Arvin Hills, mm -hmm. keeping it real here in Oakland County here, and I love that. And then also sitting right to my immediate left, I have Kelsey Ernie, and she is, um, you are through OCC, but you are with the Matt Two student. And my understanding is also called really cool Matt Squared student there, employed at Brosa. So welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great. So at this point, I think that um, we are ready to move on to some things here. So, <laughs> hello, I'm looking for. Okay, good. So now let's welcome the bright lights. Forgive me for those that um, I'm getting old. I can't see very well. Um, we are going to now welcome our uh, Mr. Dan Kelly. He is the OCC board chair, and he is going to be coming out with our the Honorable Governor Rick Schneider of our great state of Michigan. Come on down. Good evening. My name is Dan Kelly and I'm chair of the OCC Board of Trustees. Welcome to the Orchard Ridge campus of the Oakland Community College. Uh, on behalf of myself, the Board of Trustees, Chancellor Meyer, and the entire college community, we are pleased to welcome Governor Snyder and his conversation on jobs. Governor Snyder earned his undergraduate degree, MBA, law degree, and the, from the University of Michigan all by the age of 23. After teaching at the University of Michigan, which I learned tonight he wants to uh, someday possibly uh, go back to teaching, which is great, he went to work as a tax accountant for Cooper's Library, now Price Waterhouse Coopers, where he made partner after only six years. 
He then joined the fledgling company of Gateway and helped it grow uh, or began there with little over 700 employees and helped it grow to a Fortune 500 company with 10,000 employees. Governor Snyder became Michigan's 48th governor in 2011 in a landslide victory. Self-described as, as one tough nerd, his platform on lower taxes, balanced budgets, and job creation renewed economic growth in our state. As the governor said during his inauguration, we can only achieve extraordinary things if we aspire beyond traditional thinking. The governor's mission is to continue this growth through increased funding for community colleges to deliver more skilled trades and vocational training. OCC has partnered with the Governor Snyder and the Michigan Economic Development Corporation to increase Michigan's skilled workforce and ignite new interests in manufacturing careers through the Mats Squared that you'll hear more about tonight. According to the Governor, we need to reinvent the way in which we prepare children for, for fulfilling careers, reshape how Michiganders look for work, and redesign the way in which employers obtain skills they need. He is quoted as saying, tomorrow's opportunities cannot be realized with yesterday's skills. It's time to develop the new generation of talent. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me give a warm welcome to our governor, Rick Snyder. Wonderful. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Well, thanks for the great welcome, and it's great to be here, and, and thank you for that introduction. It's great to be at Oakland Community College, and it's great to see so many students here. Because this is a fabulous place. It, I attended community college as part of my education. You heard all those U of M things. Actually, I started at Kellogg Community College, so I'm a huge advocate of community colleges. It made a difference in my life, and I hope it does in yours. But tonight's topic, we're doing something a little bit different than we've done before. Um, quite often, I'll do a town hall. This is actually geared to be a conversation about jobs. And that's why I'm really proud and excited to have a number of wonderful people joining me on stage and then have an opportunity to have a dialogue with you. So this is the first time we're trying this format on this topic. So hopefully you're going to bear with us. And hopefully give us your feedback on what you like, what we can do better, because continuous improvements is always one of my big goals. Um, to kick it off, though, I do want to recognize some people here, because we have a number of great people up here on stage that you were introduced already. But I want to recognize, as part of the reinvention of Michigan, we are making tremendous progress. If you think about 2009 versus today, huge improvements in terms of unemployment. Literally, we've created over 200,000 private sector jobs. Personal incomes are recovering in Michigan. We've come up five states in our ranking. Um, homes are being sold again. We're growing as a state again in terms of population instead of going backwards. So many good things are going on, but we shouldn't stop here. For all the things we've done, there's a lot more work to be done because there are still too many people out there struggling. And we really need to focus on that. But I'm proud of what we've accomplished. And I really want to recognize um, my partners in doing this. So I'm going to ask them to stand up, but if we could give them a round of applause. And those are the members of the legislature that are with us. So I want to say thank you to all our legislators. <laughs> the other cool part, though, is uh, OCC has some wonderful partnerships. And earlier this year, I had a chance to actually visit a site that their partner has. We have a number of people here from the operating engineers that are helping do skilled trades work in terms of getting people um, potentially jobs in the construction industry, other fields. They have a great training center out in Howell that I had an opportunity to visit. They actually let me get on a bulldozer for a couple minutes, scared too many people. I got off the bulldozer. Um, but I really appreciate um, the operating engineers and their partnership with OCC. And I know we've got some students and people in that kind of program. So if you could stand up and we could give you a round of applause for the people from the operating engineers. Thank you. And the last group I want to recognize that I want to really single out is we have some other young people. We have some high school students here that are part of something that you're going to hear more about from the great representative from Bosch, and it's about FIRST Robotics. And this is something you're going to hear more about, but I'm really passionate about FIRST Robotics. And we got some cool people in t-shirts here that are part of FIRST Robotics. If you want to stand up, we'll give you a round of applause from the Bloomfield. Area. And you can see the team name on their shirt, the Bionic Barons. There's, if, being a nerd, i got to love that stuff. you got to be very excited. 
Let me open up with a few comments, though, about the jobs topic and how all these things connect and how some of the things you're going to hear about tonight all tie together. Because when we talk about the need for jobs, it's interesting. We actually have a number of open jobs in Michigan already. We have a site called mitalent.org where we over, have over 60,000 open jobs in Michigan today. The point is, is many of those jobs require a different skill set than many of the people looking for a job have. And we need to really work on making that connection. If you talk to employers, many employers will tell you they're concerned not only today about or, and the future about are they going to have the most talented people working in their organization with the right skill sets. So one of the key things I want to focus in on, in addition to creating more jobs or creating an environment where the private sector can create more jobs, because that's who creates the jobs, or the private sector, is how do we connect people with careers and making that connection between those two worlds. And so you're going to hear the story from Maureen tonight, who's got a construction business she's been in, about how she had to go out and find skilled tradespeople to join her organization and how challenging that can be. Um, one of the things, though, as to how do we facilitate that connection is a program that you're going to hear about tonight called Matt Squared. It was mentioned briefly already. Um, Matt Squared is Michigan Advanced Technician Training. And I'm really proud of the people we have on stage tonight. We have two people that are part of that program. We have a representative, Stefan, from Brosia, and we have Kelsey, who is a participant in the program. And to give you a little history, what happened is, is I made a trade mission to Germany. And I wanted to look at one of the great needs we have are skilled tradespeople, career tech education, vocational training, something that we don't do well enough, and particularly or, or have our, enough parents and kids understand what a great career opportunity these can be. So as a really chance to go to Brogia, I went to their headquarters in Germany and visited their apprenticeship program. They were great hosts. They took me around. They showed it to me. And then we had a great discussion about how do we bring that to Michigan? How do we make that happen here? How do we adapt the German model for Michigan? And it's happened because of the partnership with OCC, Henry Ford Community College, Brogia, a number of other great companies. They've created a program to really give an opportunity for students to apply to a program, work while they're going through the program, get an education while they're going through the program, successfully complete, complete a program that gives them an associate's degree, have a job waiting for them when they come out, and have a place to work for two years, hopefully for a career. Isn't that cool in terms of a concept? So it's great we have Stefan here from Brogia. So I'm going to let him tell their story. But it's also great to have Kelsey here. And Kelsey's a name I love because I have a senior in high school, a daughter of mine named Kelsey too. Um, but Kelsey's a participant in this program, so we'll get to hear from her. So if you think about there's great opportunity there. But then we need to keep going to say, how do we encourage young people to get excited about particularly STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math, whether it be for a university degree or career tech training. And that's where it's great to have Bosch here. I'm very excited about having Max with us and a FIRST Robotics team. I'm fired up about FIRST Robotics. FIRST Robotics, if you don't know, is a program geared for high school, but also middle school and younger kids to teach them about robots. Now, that sounds very techy for many of us, but it's more than robots. And these young people will tell you, hopefully I have a chance to talk to them when we're done, it's about a whole team effort where it's about building a robot, it's about doing the software, but it's also about doing the plan, the business plan, the marketing, about raising the funds, about doing everything associated with essentially, it's almost creating a business, being an entrepreneur, and being successful in that. And that's something that I'm proud to say. We already lead the nation in FIRST Robotics. We have about 10% of the teams are in Michigan for this program. But it's so cool. I got so fired up hearing about it. And I want to thank the legislators for their support. We're putting additional resources because we're setting a goal to have us have 20% of the teams in the country. <coughs> because that's an opportunity to give kids a great in and an opportunity for a job. Because I can tell you, if a resume came across my desk and I saw a first row bikes, even back in the middle school or high school, they're that's a special spark because of the hard work they do. So hopefully you're going to have a chance to hear about that. So if you step back and think about it, and I'll be happy to answer your questions because I want you to hear from all these fine people, it's about creating an environment where we have more and better jobs by creating an environment where companies can say they can be competitive 
and create and bring jobs to Michigan, grow jobs in Michigan, be successful here. One of the key things then is to say, how do you have the best people and we have the most wonderful people in our state already? But how do we make sure they connect to the right companies with the right skill sets and talent? And that's what programs like Matt Squared can do. Um, the program with the operating engineers does the same thing in partnership with OCC. It's about making those connections to careers, not just saying good luck after you get an education. And then going back into the educational system to say how do we get innovative? How do we add new ideas? How do we put people in a position where it's more than simply learning about material, but applying that material? And that's what a FIRST Robotics can do. These are special things. And these are special things that are all at a fairly early stage. So hopefully, as you see tonight, we can have a great dialogue about how can we take those, how can we build on them, how can we grow them, and show the rest of the country and the world that we have the most talented people. And we can put those people in wonderful career opportunities in organizations to make the world's best products. And that when you hear about Michigan in the future, it'll go back to something that many of us may remember even back when we were kids. That when you heard something that was made in Michigan, it was special because you knew you were going to get the best product in the world. So that's what this is all about. So I'm going to stop there and give you a chance to hear from the great people. And then let's have a great dialogue. So thank you so much for coming. Great. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. So let's get right into this. Um, Max, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, yourself and then also your company. Max, again, is the CFO and Executive Vice President of Robert Bosch LLC here in Farmington Hills. Thank you, Mary, and thank you, Governor, for giving us the opportunity to be in this discussion. I'm really, really excited because I'm also very passionate about what we're doing in regards of education. Bosch um, does everything under Invented for Life. So we produce uh, products, we invent products which uh, improve the quality of life every day. And uh, we do that with a passion, and we have done that with a passion for technology and innovation for more than 127 years. So to keep this passion alive, uh, we create jobs. And uh, we want to continue to create meaningful jobs. And to create meaningful jobs, it's our job as company to uh, ignite the passion uh, very, very early for everybody. And actually, we start out in middle school. We are part of a world in motion. So we go into the middle schools and teach science hands-on with uh, little toys. I'm allowed to be a volunteer, too. I love it. Um, and uh, we connect them between science and what actually can be done with science. The next step what we do is first robotics. And uh, I can tell you, we have more excitement there than you had last night at the Tigers game. So <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a lot of enthusiasm. And as you heard, it's much more than just science and uh, technology. They learn a um, much more. And our um, associates also learn because they mentor. So they give their resources in hours and uh, uh, help those first robotics teams. And when they go from the first robotics to the colleges, we try to uh, continue to uh, help with this passion. If you just learn theory at, at the college, you don't have the um, combination with the product. So we are in the uh, uh, universities and show this uh, combination and also bring uh, young students in, this, in uh, internships. It's very, very important to keep that passion. And when they're finished with uh, college, they come in uh, management development programs to our company. So again, we do rotations. We keep on uh, uh, this learning cycle. And uh, I'm very, very proud of that we can say we had several who uh, went through FIRST Robotics with us who now are associates at Bosch. And they're actually first robotics mentors. Okay. So what we do is we try to uh, work with a lot of people, but always have the individual attention uh, for every student. And uh, we are very, very proud uh, being a part of a solution here in Michigan. And uh, we agree very much uh, that it's very important. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much, you. Max. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, That's great. Yeah. 
So Lorraine, you are up. Lorraine Hal is the owner and controller of EJH Construction. My husband started the business approximately 40 years ago, and we have uh, evolved through that time. And you've seen a huge changes in, in the state of Michigan and in the country over that time. And the biggest concern and the problem that we are facing at this particular time is getting, we have enough construction people at the moment, but we could always use more. But going forward, you don't see young people going into that industry or any of the technical vocational industries. And I don't think um, we have made it clear what kind of careers you can have. And it doesn't, you're not forever in a field in a, in a, in a dirty circumstance or, or what have you. So it's really important to get the word out and to, to get young people interested and to expose them to it uh, because I don't know what's going to happen going through it in the future with a, a large elderly population and many young people who have built their careers in other areas and they are not interested in fixing their home or, or building something. So they're going to want people to do that for them and, and without this the people going into those careers, I don't know what we're going to do. So you might want to buy a house and you might not be able to because there's nobody to build it. So the concern there is, is, is just getting the word out and, and making it uh, understood to young people to at least look, think about it. And there's so many, such a wide variety. And I actually, we have a relatively new employee um, and we're so excited because he's, extremely talented and interested in the field and exciting. Matt, if you would stand up. Matt Zulch has only been with us about three weeks. <laughs> and we're delighted to have him and, and, and any others who might think about it. So I see a lot of young people in the audience. <laughs> That's wonderful. So watch out. She's going to be talking to you after this, so, which is a good thing. Um, let's move on to Stefan Politis, who is the vice president um, of HR at Rosa, mm -hmm. um, Auburn Hills. Tell us a little bit. Thank you, Mary. First of all, thank you, Governor Snyder and OCC for hosting this event and for giving us the opportunity to talk about Matt Square and its benefits for the industry and especially for Prosa. I would like to introduce Prosa first to give you some background about the company I work for and then talk about Matt Square. Prosa, with its 21,000 employees working um, at 58 locations in 23 countries, was founded in Germany more than 100 years ago. We are the fifth largest um, automotive supplier company um, in the world that is still family owned. That's something very special and something we are really proud of. Um, we deliver and we develop and deliver um, systems for vehicle doors, seat structures, lift gates, and um, electronic drives to more than 100 car makers and automotive suppliers in the world. Our regional headquarters is located in Auburn Hills, Michigan, as Mary already mentioned. And from there, we support the big three in Detroit, as well as other OEMs in the North American region. We currently operate nine plants in the United States, Canada, and Mexico, two of them being located in Michigan, one in Warren, the other one in New Boston. Um, To talk about New Boston, with the great support of Governor Snyder in the state of Michigan, um, we were able to find and also get a new facility close to Detroit Airport. This is one of the most important projects that we have right now to ramp up this facility and to staff it with the people and the highly skilled workers yeah, that we need. Overall, for all our Michigan facilities, um, it's one of the biggest assets that we need in the future, the highly skilled workforce. And now we talk about Med Square. In our opinion, Met Square is a great opportunity for all the participating parties, yeah, especially for the companies, to find, develop, and train their new employees that they will need on a midterm perspective. Um, it, will, it shows so many benefits in all directions. Yeah? So the students, they will receive um, a statewide accepted associate's degree, and they will get a job perspective after graduating in the program. Between the companies and the community colleges, yeah, there's a pretty important cooperation going on, yeah, with also benefits in both directions, yeah, because both sides will 
learn from each other and gain knowledge. Yeah? They're always talking about the newest developments regarding processes and um, standards in the industry. The whole program itself is a great common effort between all the involved parties. And in my opinion, it also will help to support the future development of the state of Michigan. The newest development is that the Michigan Economic Development Corporation already has announced that you want to expand the program. And Brose, as um, hopefully many other companies, yeah, will support this new initiative. And I would now like to turn over to Kelsey Ernie, one of our Metro Met Square students, and I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Stefan. Um, I'm Kelsey Ernie. I'd just like to let you always all know that I'm a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm picturing you all in your underwear right now. <laughs> That's um, a scary thought. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> There's a lot of people I go to school with here. <laughs> um, I'm a part of the Matt Squared program at OCC. I attend uh, OCC in Auburn Hills um, with some of the students here. Um, prior to that, I went to an all-girls Catholic high school that um, really gave me a solid foundation in math, um, in math and science, but really didn't offer me the technology classes with the hands-on learning. Um, so to fill that void, my lovely mother um, found summer programs um, that would offer hands-on learning and more technology-based classes. At first, I wasn't willing to go and give up my summer days, um, but eventually, after the first couple of days of the hands-on projects and all that, um, I was the one in the car beeping the horn, telling her, come on, hurry up, let's go. So um, I actually, before I became a part of the program, I went to OCC and got my associate's degree in liberal arts. And I was kind of stuck at this part of my life saying, you know, OK, I have two years of school completed. What do I do next? And this program actually kind of fell into my lap. And I researched and I said, you know, this is kind of the way I learn. And this is something that I'm interested in. So I went ahead and applied, and I went through the hiring process, and or, I'm sorry, before the hiring process, the interviewing process. And um, I was hired. I got offered three um, job op op options. Mm -hmm. The first one was from Brosa, and obviously, they were my first choice from the beginning. Um, so that was really exciting. Oh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> You're doing great. Oh, You're thanks. You're doing great. Thanks. <laughs> um, OK. The classes were four weeks in, um, and the first week I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I couldn't tell you what the things in the machine shop were called. I couldn't tell you the names of anything. Um, and now it's the f almost the uh, fifth weekend, and I can say proudly, with the help of my machine shop professor, um, Professor Dennis, and Ian, um, I machined my first perfect part yesterday. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, right. <laughs> Woo! Oh. And another class that uh, actually is very interesting to me is our English class, which is kind of funny because this is a technology-based program. Um, but the English class is a reading and writing for problem solving. And um, it really teaches us to solve problems using the techniques of reading and writing. Um, I think we skipped the safety lecture in English, though. Um, <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't think our first injury in Matt Squared would come from our English uh, class there. Um, it's okay, Zaskia is all right. She had to go to the ER. She's fine. Bad stapler accident. She's all right. <laughs> um, so being four weeks into the program, I really think that we are doing really well, um, working out the bugs. But as far as the program goes with getting us into staying in Michigan, um, the program is called MAT Squared, Michigan Applied Techno Technician Training. Um, and I keep losing my train of thought. <laughs> um, but it's really based, you know, it's, it helps us to create jobs and to be a technical elite in this job that we are going to be doing. So I think uh, I can speak for all of us that I've never worked harder in my life, and we are definitely on our way to becoming those technical elites.
gonna have to get rid of the internship stuff because this is just outstanding. <laughs> wow, my girls are in trouble. Um, <laughs> so I know what I'm gonna talk to them about tonight. Governor, um, would you like to say a few remarks before we open up to Q&A? Well, let's just open it up because I right. think hopefully you can see the perspective here. Um, and that's why I thought it'd be great to hear from the people really on the front lines doing this work and to see the experiences. So let's have a great discussion. Feel free to ask good questions because I want to grow these programs. Stefan said it already is, is um, we're doing mechatronics, which is mechanical and electronics combined for the first program, but there's no reason this couldn't apply to so many different fields. It could apply to the healthcare fields. Mm -hmm. It could apply to, to bachelor's degrees programs. So there's no reason this can't apply in so many different ways. Again, vocational ed in high school. So let's just be creative and see how we can make this work for all of us in terms of new innovations and new ways of doing things. Okay, let's get to it then. Tori, do you have a question over there? Yes, we have a question if you'd like to stand. And I'd like to re remind our viewers watching online if they have a question on Facebook or Twitter to use hashtag AskGovSnyder. Thank you to the panel for being here. Governor Snyder, you're all amazing and we appreciate the open forum. My question, my name is Pam McAuliffe, I'm from Milford. I work as a career counselor among other things. And is there any initiative, you talked about growing these and applying these disciplines, is there any initiative that can come to fruition about transportation, public transportation, to link our outlying communities and students or possible employees to these wonderful training and job opportunities? Thank you. Uh, that's a wonderful question and I appreciate it. Uh, this is an opportunity that everyone here will have a chance to participate in the answer to that question. And what do I mean by that? We passed some legislation this last year, again with my fine partners in the legislature, called the Regional Transit Authority. Um, the Metro Detroit area was, has been the, the last and sole largest area of the United States that really didn't have a Regional Transit Authority. Um, it's been 40 years in the making. This was attempt number, I may have this wrong, somewhere between 23 and 26 uh, over the last 40 years to put in place a regional transit authority. We got it through the legislature because of fine, good, hard work of the people here and their colleagues. So we've set this up now. That's an area that could do this the right way, again, to get away from the old DDOT smart model of separation, but really do it in a thoughtful fashion. It's something that the plans are being put together now. Um, to go through that process to have a, a bus rapid transit system to connect outlying regions in a very efficient fashion. Um, they're going to have to put together a plan and it's something that will come to the voters of the metro area to decide whether you want to approve that or not. So the framework's been created, the legislation to enable it's been created, the planning resources are there, it's got strong support from the state government and the federal government, and so it's hopefully a case where people can see real value because one thing you'll find particularly with our younger generation they really want to use public transportation more and it's an enabler to allow people to have a career that didn't have that mobility so that's where it is very important so I appreciate the question and this will be an ongoing dialogue but hopefully you're going to really step and take that extra time to learn about the RTA. Wonderful. Um, do we have a question over here? Caitlin. Hi, my name is uh, Mark Rosales, and the question that I have is regarding high school students. Um, in the 80s, I was a product of um, the universities of allowing programs like high school students to be able to go for the summer, learn about engineering, accounting, um, medicine. Are there plans to expand those programs to allow our high school students to do that career exploratory um, session? during their high school year so that they have a better idea or a direction of where they want to be from a career standpoint? Yeah, the answer is yes. Again, those are things that are really valuable, but I would expand upon that. It's not just to have an opportunity to do some of the college programs for the summertime, um, but it's also to involve companies more. And again, that's where you've seen three companies up here that want to be more involved, that are already involved. And I think we want to see that continue to grow. Um, one thing I've mentioned to people is I'd love to see, I'm very open and it's great to have legislators here, I brought up the concept, even if we need to pass some laws to help with the liability issues, are there companies that are willing to do tours more often that might be hesitant because of legal liability? Can we help give them better protections to encourage tours of 
places because again the mindset of what you think is in these facilities is much different than the reality they're high-tech places they're wonderfully clean great hard-working places to get more exposure to that so we need to do it with both companies and colleges one program though I also would promote is called dual enrollment um, we passed legislation to make that more feasible for high schools and colleges to partner together so you could get credit at the same time for high school and college because think about that College is too expensive, uh, to be blunt. Again, community colleges are the value proposition in that equation. But if you could get a year of high school done, or a year of college done while you're going to high school, and you're going for a bachelor's degree, you've saved 25%. If you're going for an associate's degree, you could save potentially 50%. So these tools are there. Now it's up to us to do partnerships to use those tools. Wonderful. And just to add, I mean, you have students, you have people that are interested in this, but you also have companies like Mala, DG Technologies. I mean, their, their CEOs are out here in the audience and listening and, and ready to move forward with um, this whole program. So I think that's great. So let's move to another question. Tori, do you have someone? Hi, I'm Donald Connell. I'm with the Operating Engineers, and I want to thank the governor for coming out to our training center. It's out in Howell. We've got 515 acres, and uh, I think the <coughs> governor walked away with a true appreciation what, what, for what we're offering the state of Michigan. Um, we've been doing apprenticeship training here in Michigan for about 100 years. And uh, I have the same feeling uh, that the lady from uh, EGNH um, raises, um, attracting tomorrow's workforce. Our, our current value system that is uh, broadcast over the television waves, uh, the school systems measure their success on how many people go to a four-year four university. Uh, how are we going to change that paradigm? Because people can find success, and I really applaud Kelsey and her comments that, that you know, she found her way uh, to, a, to a, a career, because that's what this is all about, finding a career that fits her. So thank you. Yeah, we lost our way in the state and in, their, in our country about the skilled trades careers in many respects. Um, we got on a motion of saying, let's push everyone to get a bachelor's degree. And we do need to encourage people to go to university, particularly in science, technology, engineering, and math, because there are critical needs there, too, the health fields. At the same time, though, we shouldn't have stopped emphasizing the skilled trades. Because these are very honorable, they're well-paying, they're very rewarding careers. And we need to reemphasize that and get parents and kids to really be open-minded. Again, this is where the operating engineers having career day is a huge opportunity. So you can go see it first person. The only thing I was disappointed in, because I met with a number of school groups, is they should have had four or five times as many students in their groups um, because they're great careers. So we need to emphasize that. Um, because that's where many of the jobs are, too. And many of the great job opportunities are in these. And it's going to work out well by pushing ahead. But that's why we want to emphasize um, Matt Squared. One of my favorite stories I will share with you very quickly, though, I, I love this because it really brought the point home, is I was in Cadillac, Michigan about a, two years ago. And I'd been talking about welders. And I'd been go, talk, going all across Michigan saying, if you're a welder, you can get a job in about 10 minutes in any corner of Michigan. And I challenged people in town halls all across Michigan. No one ever argued with me about that. So they heard about it in Cadillac. So I went and visited the Intermediate School District, their career tech center. They had me come on a day. They set me up. <laughs> it was a setup to come see the welding program because they also had a tour of sixth grade girls there. So they had a class of sixth grade girls going through the welding session. And this was awesome. I walk in this place, and there's all these sixth grade girls with the helmets down, the you know, the aprons on, the whole works. They're welding little Michigans to take home <laughs> to show their parents Aww. how cool it was. So I went up to them, and they popped up their hood. I said, what do you think about this? Oh, we want to be welders. They're all fired up. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> and they're sixth graders, so the next day it might have been something else. But for that moment, <laughs> they're all going to be welders. And that's the kind of thing we need to give opportunity to kids and for parents. Great, thank you. Caitlin, do you have another question? Yeah, hello, uh, my, my name is Randy Stone. I'm part of the group that founded Oakland Community College. Uh, awesome. One of the uh, last things uh, I, I've done before I've retired, uh, 
um, it was to uh, be a apprentice advisor for General Motors and UAW. My concern uh, is is that we're still siloing um, uh, this this problem in uh, two ways. One is that there is not a separation between technical education and university education. Okay, um, you 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 can flow into one and the uh, or or the other at any time you want to. And I've seen it both ways. Universities go students going back to technical, technical going to universities. And when you say or technology or universities, I, I think that's a misconception. Uh, the other part of this thing uh, is the OCC was formed during a crisis, Vietnam crisis, but. Um, and uh, I, I'm looking uh, back to World War II when my family was involved in industrial uh, mobilization. Uh, there was a problem there as it was uh, during the Vietnam period in getting people to lower their prejudices so that we could use all the, uh, the resources around us. And I'm talking about uh, the resources, both physical and training, that the unions have also. Uh, what are we going to do about breaking down these silos and getting all these resources to work? During World War II and during the Vietnam War period, we did that. Well, I appreciate your comments, Rain, because yeah. they're not mutually exclusive. They can add on and they collaborate. Part of this is to allow people the maximum amount of flexibility. So the way I view it is, that's why I call our, our future education system, my view, should be called P20, prenatal through lifelong learning. <laughs> Literally, and to get rid of the silo concept, to say we should have it so you have mobility within the system to decide where you want to go. And your point, of, your last point in particular, though, that's where I'd again highlight OCC partnering with the operating engineers. There's a great opportunity where people are working closely together in terms of making those ties with union people working with you know college people working together in partnership. And it's not who's wearing what hat. They just want wonderful outcomes to happen, which I we should applaud. So let's give a round of applause to this great program. Absolutely. The only thing I noticed, I don't think Don looks 100 years old. That's the only part. <laughs> no, but I appreciate how long that program's been going. But to your point, I think we could actually, I'm not going to put Stefan on the spot, but I think if you went back to Brogia, and probably in Bosch, and we have other great companies here. We have Magna. I know we've got a lot of great companies, but in these companies, you could find people that quite often may have had people that were apprentice program people, but then went on to get a university degree in engineering. Um, sometimes they actually end up getting a PhD. So it's not to say you can't go on the other track. It's just you make choices, and those choices have good results, but then you can keep going. Again, I'm very proud of the fact that I feel bad sometimes. I get introduced about having three degrees from the University of Michigan. I also want to mention Kellogg Community College. Because again, that's how I got started. Actually, you have one sitting right here. I started out in an apprenticeship. So that's great. And you have a second one here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, um, Tori, you've got something going on over there. Yeah, I have a question from social media. And uh, Governor, uh, our friends joining us online want to know, what was your first job? My first job? Um, my first job, I was 14 years old. Um, I spent my summers out on Gun Lake. My folks, we grew up, I grew up in a 900 square house in Battle Creek. My father was, owned a small window cleaning business. Um, but we were fortunate enough to have a place 30 miles away on Gun Lake. So we'd close our house in the summer and we had a really small cottage on the lake. So as we got older, there was a general store essentially across the street. And so my folks, actually my mother, went and got me a job. <laughs> <laughs> and this job, it was doing everything because it was a general store. So they still had gas pumps then. The general store is still there. They don't do all the functions anymore. But they had, I was pumping gas, doing ice. They had a butcher that was one of the best meat people in the entire area. So I used to, I, we couldn't cut the meat, but I'd be serving it. You know, remember the old meat cases where you'd go pick stuff out? I'd do all that kind of work. I'd stock the shelves, mop the floors, all those kind of things. And I did that for three summers. And I worked six days a week, probably about 48 to 60 hours a week, um, 14, 15, and 16, for the amazing price of a dollar and a quarter an hour. <laughs> but I got a great work ethic. 
because they were wonderful people. And to the degree I didn't get paid, they fed you a lot. Because I was working for a butcher and a wonderful, his wife ran the cash register. They're wonderful people. So I, instead of quarter pounders for lunch, I'd get a three quarter pounder. <laughs> Oh, my kids would put me in the doghouse if I try that one. But anyway, moving on to the next question. Caitlin, do you have someone? Yep, this is our last question for the night. Um, hello, my name is Mary Kay Aki, and I'm the Executive Director of Career Focused Education for Oakland County. Uh, we operate four of those career and technical education centers in um, the county. My question, Governor, is being a businessman, I know that you look very carefully at the infrastructure and the resources that we have in the state. How are we going to be able to utilize all of the 50 career and tech campuses in this state that in high school at 11th and 12th grade are preparing students? We have four of them in MAT two. Ian, one of our students here, had to fight to come to mechatronics in our building because the only thing they wanted him to do was AP classes. And so we have this huge uh, resource, this infrastructure that currently exists. We partner with the operating engineers. We are first in Oakland County. On top of that, we have Oakland Competitive Robotics Association. They get to do it twice in this county. We have CSI Oakland. We have family engineering nights. Nobody knows about us. And we skip over that element of high school. I know many of our legislators have toured our campuses, and we are not at capacity across this state. It is a resource not utilized. And we believe in this. We've done it for 30 years. I'm sitting here thinking this could be the pivotal night of my career if you can make this work. Okay. Thank you. Well, one, one, one comment I'd make is hopefully you can see, and I want to really compliment you, not only for the great programs, because you went through a wonderful list of programs, but something just as important is the passion you express them with. Because that's the passion we need. That's the passion about how you reinvent a state. And so the important thing is, is I absolutely agree with all the things you said. Because it wouldn't just be in Oakland County, and you've got wonderful programs here. But too, way too often, I'll learn about a wonderful program that the classes aren't full, that there's opportunity there to have more people join. And there is a job there. Um, that's one reason when I mentioned over 60,000 open jobs, one of the first steps we wanted to do was to catalog that. So we created mitalent.org. So you can go to this website, mitalent.org. It shows a counter of the open jobs in Michigan. And these are good jobs. These are jobs a lot of people would want to have, but we have this mismatch. But another thing we have on there that you can use, you have to go a couple stages. It's not as easy as it should be, but under career exploration. There's a career investment calculator on there. And you can play with this as many times as you want. You can go on there, and you can put in a career, and it'll tell you the lifetime earnings for that career. And it'll give you an estimate of how much it costs to get that education. So it almost gives you an idea of the return on investment for a career. Because my view is we're never going to tell you and we should never tell you what you should study. We want to provide you great information and opportunity and access. So that's just one step. The next step is what we're doing now is really figuring out how to help you market your programs. Because one thing Michiganders, we're wonderful at making things. We're actually not really good at marketing, folks. I mean, think about this. This is something I get on, I talk about it quite often is we need to be louder and prouder about who we are and the cool things we have going as a state, let alone wonderful programs like that. So we are going to be committed. We're doing an inventory now. I'm asking an inventory be done of every program that you have and every other person like you in the state of Michigan. How many programs there are, how many openings there are, what's the capacity, how many spots are filled, what's the job fill rate, we're gathering all that data to try to pull it together in some fashion because then we can go out across Michigan and tell people these are great opportunities. Then can we get companies to open up tours? Can we get other people to do our apprenticeships to do all the things we're talking about? So to your question, this could be the day we are going to get this done. Governor, <laughs> I stand ready. I will volunteer for anything. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you. Wow, that's great. Thank you. Would you like to do some closing re remarks, Governor? Sure. First of all, I want to thank the panelists. Can we give a good round of applause? Mary, thank you for your work and everyone and stuff like that. Thank you. And Kelsey, I could tell you stories about me being nervous, so <laughs> things like this. So <laughs> all of you, you did awesome. Thanks. And I want to thank OCC for hosting us. But hopefully, this has been worthwhile for you. I mean, if you think about you all, you, all of you came on a night the Tigers are playing. So we, <laughs> we're going to wrap this up so you can go watch the game. Yeah, <laughs> but in terms of important topic, again, we want to see the Tigers win. But what we're talking about here tonight is something that can make a difference for the young people here, our kids, our kids' kids. It can make a difference in their life. So I want to thank you for taking the time. And I really want to reiterate the, the passion and the focus that I, I love your comments, the, the last individual that spoke. Shouldn't we all have that same attitude? And what I'm hoping to do is when you go out of here, you don't just say, I came to a nice meeting. But you go home and say, I feel that same way now. And I'm ready to go to work. I'm ready to volunteer. I'm ready to speak up. I'm ready to really figure out how we connect these wonderful young people to a career, an opportunity that's going to be the foundation for making Michigan the state we all want it to be, the best state in the country. So let's just take that fire and passion out of here tonight. Thank you for all your hard work. Give us some feedback. Was this helpful? What else would you like to know? How can we make this better? Because we should be doing this around Michigan if you give us that positive feedback. So thank you so much, and thank you for all of you coming together. And go Tigers. Go Tigers. That's right. Thank you, Governor.